Howdy folks, I'm Andrew. Today I would like to teach you how to do synthetic division with the following example of 6x cubed minus x squared plus 5x plus 2 all being divided by 3x plus 1. All right, so the first thing is what you want to do is you want to identify in your dividend, which is the term to the left of that division symbol, the highest power of x. Whatever the highest power of x is, you're going to take it and add 1 to it for a total of 4. And that's going to tell you how many columns there should be here in your synthetic division table that's kind of inside of this black angled line thingamajig. All right. Now, all that has to happen now is you're going to take each of those coefficients of each of those terms and you're going to plug them into the table in decreasing order. In other words, whatever the coefficient is of your x cubed term goes first, that's a 6. Whatever the coefficient here of your x squared term is, remember there's a 1 there, so it's a negative 1, that goes next. Then it's the coefficient of the x, which is a 5, positive 5 that is, right? But I'm going to leave out the signs when it's positive, uh, because leaving them out assumes, right, that it's positive. And then the last constant term there is going to be a 2. Great. So we took care of the dividend. Now you're going to look at your divisor. And all you're going to do is take that divisor, and you're, it's going to be 3x plus 1, set it equal to 0, and solve this for x. All right, what this will do is this will actually help you and tell you what the value should be in the first place outside the box. In other words, what I'm saying is that this value of negative one third gets plugged in now here in the table. And then once you have this first row fully filled out, you're ready to begin the procedure. Okay, first step is just drop down whatever value that is uh, to the bottom. All right, there's a red box here because you're not going to put anything in it. Now this is pretty routine from here. Take this value at the bottom, multiply it by the term on the outside. So you can write that out on the side if you like. Negative one third multiplied then by six. Remember that's the same thing as six over one. When you do the multiplication, you multiply the numerators together, then you multiply the denominators together. So that's six over three. Don't forget it's overall negative. And then negative six divided by three is going to be a negative two. Okay, so this is the value. Now you're gonna plug into your adjacent cell the cell right next to it. So you plug in a negative two. Then what you do is you add the terms now of this column. That's gonna be a total then of negative three. Cool. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna re, you know, perform the procedure again. Take this new value now, negative three, and multiply it by the term on the outside. All right, so you erase this. You got your negative one third, and you're gonna multiply that now by negative three. Remember, it's the same thing as saying negative three over one. Multiply the numerators. Negative one times negative three is going to be a positive three. 3 times 1 on the bottom is going to be a 3, and 3 over 3 is going to be 1. That's going to be the value that gets plugged into now that next adjacent cell. 1. Add those terms together now of that column. That's a 6. Then, repeat the procedure. Take the 6, multiply it by the negative 1 third. We already did that over here, right? So we know it's negative 2. So just plug in a negative 2 there, and then simply add these together for a total of 0. And that then concludes the procedure of the synthetic division. Now we just have to make sure we know what we're working with. So remember this last term will always represent your remainder. The term bef uh, preceding that is going to represent your constant term. Then this represents x, this represents x squared, and dot 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 the process would continue it would be x cubed and x to the fourth, however many, you know, columns you had left now. Okay? Now, before you start writing out your quotient here, you have to remember to do one thing. All right, and I don't care what your x, I don't care what your value here uh, is of your divisor. I want you to think about this step all the time. So you got to go back to your divisor, and you have to look at the coefficient of your x term. Whatever that value is, is going to be the value that you're going to divide each of these terms by. You're not going to divide the re remainder. Okay, you're not going to divide the remainder. So what you now have to do is, just before you start writing out your quotient, take each of these terms and divide it by 3. If this was a 1 in front, or it wasn't even there, if it was just x minus 1, you would still want to think about the process, but you would have divided everything by 1, and obviously you can kind of know, right, I mean, not kind of know, you do know, uh, that that doesn't really do anything. So you can kind of quote unquote skip that step, but I don't want you to think about skipping it, because I need you to know what happens in case the problem changes. So in this particular case, we're dividing each of these by 3. So 6 divided by 3 then becomes a 2. Negative 3 divided by 3 becomes a negative 1. And then 6 divided by 3 becomes a 2. 
And these now, ladies and gentlemen, these values are now the, co the coefficient values, okay, of your constant term, your x term, your x squared term. Now you can write out your quotient, okay? Don't forget that step. So when we do this now, we have 2x squared, 2x squared, minus then minus 1x, minus 1x or just x, right? Because minus x and minus 1x is the same thing, plus 2. And then plus now, because it's a positive there, zero. Now I'm going to show you what to do here, because in case it's not zero, you won't be lost. So you're going to take whatever your remainder is, that value, and put it over whatever your divisor is, 3x plus 1. Now since it's zero divided by this, you know that this whole thing is just zero, so you can cancel it. You can get rid of it, basically. In other words, then what you're left with is you're left with 2x squared minus x plus 2, and that now, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, is your quotient. All right? So when you take this thing and you divide it by, let me do, when you take this thing and you divide it by this thing, you get this thing, known as the quotient down here. When you take your dividend, you divide it by your divisor, you get your quotient. Man, I just want to hug the person who came up with these terms. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. If this helped you out at all, like and subscribe, maybe even tell some of your classmates. That's the best way to help us out, actually. If you want to help us out, really help us spread the word. We got thousands of videos out there for you, uh, not only in math, but chemistry and phys physics as well. We solve specific problems because guess what you're going to see on your exam? Specific problems. So we want to teach you how to approach that, okay? With a little bit of practice and hopefully a little bit of guidance from us, you'll be well on your way to better grades, all right? We'd love to help you out. We want to help you get to where you're going. Please check us out. We'll see you soon.